As the four men under the watch of Nick and Chick had entered the saloon as described in the last chapter, Patsy was hurrying up Third Avenue after the two crooks, Thomas and Bolly Morris. What their purpose or intentions were, Patsy had no idea. But as he believed that whatever errand they were on was the result of what he had told them, he suspected that in some way it was connected with the burglary in 35th Street. In what way, however, he could not even guess. When they had left 34th Street, after receiving word from the young fellow which had so excited Spike, and had turned to go up 42nd Street, Patsy had supposed that they were searching for Lanigan and his companion. But when to that corner came Lanigan, and he saw how anxious they were to escape the observation of that swell cracksman, and how, as quickly as they could, they got away from the neighborhood, he was confused and could do no more than follow them to see what they were about. The route they took was not very different from that later followed by Lanigan, Seaman, Elwell, and the Unknown. However, they did not go up 3rd Avenue as far as the 4, but turned to the east a block short, going down to Avenue A, where they turned to the left and entered a house midway in the block. Now, said Patsy to himself, what are they going to do here? On the first floor, on the street, was a small store devoted to the sale of butter, cheese, and eggs. Beside this door was a door which entered into a hallway, and it was through this door that Spike Thomas and Bally Morris passed. They're going upstairs, said Patsy to himself. Anyhow, I'll sneak after them. Waiting only long enough for them to climb the first flight of stairs, Patsy dashed into the hall and cautiously followed up the stairs. As he went up this flight, He could hear them mounting the second flight, and he said to himself, They're going to the upper floor. Reaching the second floor, he followed the banisters to the foot of the second flight, and there stopped to listen. He could hear them rap at a door on the floor above him, and, in a moment or two, the door was opened and the voice of a woman in strong English accents was heard. Oh, Harry, is it you? It's a long time since I saw you. Who is this with you? It's me friend, Mr. Morris, Aunt Emma. It isn't often I get so far uptown, but being up here, I thought I'd drop in on you. I suppose Uncle Joe's gone to work. Yes, replied the voice of the woman, but come in. The next moment, the noise of the closing of the door was heard, and Patsy said to himself, Hang it, I don't believe it's anything after all. He stood for a moment or two, hardly knowing what to do. Then he said, I don't think there's any use going up there. I'd better go down and watch for them to come out. He went as far as the head of the stairs with this intention when he stopped, saying almost aloud, But what was it that tickled Spike so much down in 34th Street? He didn't shake hands with himself because he knew his aunt was home this morning. He stood still a moment, thinking, and again spoke aloud. But maybe it was Lanigan coming to 42nd Street that threw them off. He made another motion as if to go down the stairs, but halted. He was debating what to do, but the matter was settled for him at this instant. The door on the second floor opposite where he stood was suddenly opened, and a rather flashily dressed young girl of 19 or 20 appeared. Casting a glance at Patsy, she gave a cry and, jumping backward, closed the door instantly. Before Patsy could recover from his surprise, the door was swung open, and a tough-looking young man came into the hall, demanding in rough tones to know what he was doing there. I guess I've lost my way, said Patsy. Well, you want to find it right away, said the young fellow. Patsy wanted no row at this time, for he did not want Spike Thomas and Bolly Morris to know that he had followed them. Then what are you here for? Patsy looked at the girl and made a bluff. Well, he said laughing, a feller can follow a pretty girl even if he's one of Nick Carter's squad. If Patsy squared himself with his left-handed compliment with the girl, 
He certainly did not with the young fellow. Say, this Goyle is me sister, he said, and there ain't no chump going to follow her up here. I'll throw you downstairs. Look out, said the girl. Patsy Murphy ain't no easy thing. While this was going on, Patsy was trying hard to figure out how it was that he was known to this girl, whom he did not recollect ever having seen before. Though the young man was threatening in his manner, he had as yet made no move to attack Patsy. Patsy turned on the young fellow shortly and said, I've given it to you straight. Now don't come back with me with that or I'll wipe that ugly mug of yours off your face. The young fellow staggered back a step, and Patsy went on. I don't believe this Goyle is any sister of yours. She's too pretty, and you're too ugly. Patsy was playing to get into such position that he might slip down the stairs without further trouble. All the more as he saw that he had made a point with the girl. He thought this rapidly, and also that there was no use of further trying to quiet the people and that he must defend himself. Now's your chance. Get down the stairs. Patsy turned and went down the stairs, not hurriedly, but watchfully. He was trying to see if Spike Thomas and Bolly Morris had been attracted by the rumpus. He could see nothing of them, but he could not believe that they had not heard the noise and had not seen him. However, he reached the street without further interference and... Placing himself in a position where he could watch the door without being seen himself, waited to see the two crooks come from the house. Patsy laughed to himself as he said, Hang me if I don't think she's looking for me. I must have jollied her for fair. After waiting a few minutes, the girl went up the street slowly a few doors when she stopped and again looked around. Patsy stepped out of his concealment and going towards the girl saw her brighten up and nod at him. I guess you got me out of a bad scrape, he said as he came up to her. Oh, she replied with a smile. It wasn't so bad. There are only chumps there. You was too much for them. Say, what was you in there for anyway? To see you, said Patsy. Ah, go on, cried the girl with a laugh. Yes, I'll give it to you straight. I have followed two fellows into that house who went up to the third floor, and when you came out of the door, I was thinking whether I would go up or go down. What have they been doing? asked the girl. Nothing that I know of, replied Patsy with a laugh. I was wanting to know what they were going to do. Crooks, were they? asked the girl. Friends of mine, replied Patsy and I thought they were going to do something about a thing I told them of, leaving me out. I was just following up there to see what they were going to do. Oh, and I interfered, said the girl. Oh, I don't know. I was going away when you opened the door. What I was afraid of was that the row would let them know I was after them. I don't think it did, said the girl. Didn't anyone come from the third floor? asked Patsy. No said the girl. Who lives up there? asked Patsy. These are my men now, and they're coming from another way. I'll see you again soon. He dashed out into the street and followed after the two. The way pursued by the two young men, Thomas and Morris, was straight down the avenue until they reached 42nd Street, when they hurried up that street to 3rd Avenue, where, Patsy was certain, they meant to board a car. On reaching the avenue, he put himself in such a position that he could board the same car the two young crooks did. Now, what was it all about? I must lay by to get a chance to talk to Spike when they come out. He made his way to a drinking place, which he knew to be one of the haunts of Spike and Bolly Morris, to wait for them. Thank you for watching this video. Please like. Share and subscribe to the channel to see the latest videos. Thank you.